Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Living Hope Lutheran Church. Glad that you're here to worship with us. A couple of announcements before we begin our service. One is that there's going to be a strange man walking around taking pictures of you. Um, we are trying to update our website and make it uh, a little more appealing. So we are taking some pictures. Uh, he is a professional photographer from our grandmother church in SVL over in Westminster. And he is gonna be taking some pictures. If you do not want your picture on our website, know this, I will contact you before I put your picture on our website. So do not be afraid of that. If you don't want it, all you have to do is say no, I'd rather not, that's just fine, okay? So don't be afraid, I'm not gonna be posting your picture all over the internet without your permission, okay? <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, also after the service, we will have a presentation uh, from the building team. Um, there's some drawings in the back. Uh, so just, just know that that's coming, all right? All right, so service today, we, we are all blessed, amen? amen? How many blessings do you have? Seven. Eight on a good day. Hundreds, right? Sometimes those blessings of God don't always mean good things. And we're going to talk about that today, that sometimes our blessings can actually be bad. And how is it that we deal with the blessings that God gives to us? So let's stand, first of all, by joining in a song, getting us ready for worship. Lord, I need you. Blessings on your worship this morning. Online, the service will be posted for you in the live feed 
Also, those online, don't forget to post your prayer requests. We'll pray through those in a little bit. Follow along with the order of worship. Almighty God, before whose presence the angels veil their faces with reverence and love, we acknowledge your glory and worship you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the eternal Trinity. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. You may join me. right for us to ask for his forgiveness and that's what we'll do with the confession of sin O holy and most merciful father we confess that from birth our sinful nature has made us unfit to stand before you what is more we have broken your law repeatedly in our thoughts words and actions so often we do the evil you forbid and fail to do the good you command you know our hearts and our lives lord we are guilty and deserve only to be condemned but at your gracious word, we come to you and plead, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have, have mercy, mercy on me, O God, God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. The Lord, our gracious Father, has forgiven all your sins through the life and death of his one and only Son, Jesus the Christ. With his resurrection from death, he has given you the sure hope of everlasting life. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So go now and leave the life of sin and produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Amen. 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 Enjoy in the verses.
Amen. Amen. We hear God's word today. He speaks to our hearts, to our minds, to our faith in his word. In our first lesson today, God, Jesus, talks about the fact that there's going to be some people on the last day who are going to say to him, I prophesied in your name. I did all sorts of things to serve you in the kingdom of God. And Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. What is it that gets us ready for eternal life? How is it that we are given the gift of salvation and the gift of God's blessing? Is it through the work that we do for the kingdom of God? Is it the good things that we do in the world? What is it that gets us ready? Matthew chapter 7, this is what Jesus says. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. But then he says this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, what gets us ready? The next lesson is from Psalm 51. David writes, he goes before the Lord God and confesses his sins. And at the end, he talks about what it is to do the work of God. What is it that makes us ready for God and to receive his salvation? And he talks about something called a broken heart, right? Or a contrite heart, right? Psalm 51, this is what is written. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You, are a, you who are God my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. This is the word of the Lord. We continue by confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Join in the hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
bow our heads and we join together. Bless us, O oh Lord, with your spirit, through your word, Lord God. Bless our faith and our walk with you as we meditate. In Jesus' name. My brothers, my sisters, is it better to have a blessing or not have a blessing? Physical, earthly blessing. I think first, right off the top of our head, almost all of us would say it's better to, to have it, right? I saw, I saw a little story. There was a, a jar filled with rice and a mouse found this jar full of rice and there was no top on the jar and it sat on top of the jar filled with rice and said to itself, oh, look at this, I have found food that will last me for months and I can sit there and eat this food. I don't have to go anywhere. I can just sit on top of this pile of rice in the jar and be happy. What a blessing. He began to eat the rice and eat the rice and eat the rice and eat the rice and after three, four weeks, the level of the rice went down further and further and further, and suddenly the mouse realized that he could not get out of the jar. And so the blessing had become a problem. The blessing had become an issue. When God gives us physical, earthly blessings, it's meant to be a good thing, but the danger is that every physical and earthly blessing that God gives to us has the potential to become an issue become an obstacle. There is a, a, a passage in the book of Proverbs that, uh, that says this. It's an interesting verse. Solomon writes, Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God writes that poverty causes problems because maybe it causes me, if I'm going through a rough time, maybe I don't have, maybe I need something, it might cause me to disobey God and do something that would dishonor God's name. But blessings also cause problems because once I have all these blessings, physical, earthly, human blessings, I may decide that, oh, what do I need God for? And you've seen that, haven't you? How many of great pop singers that are out there in the world started off learning how to sing where? Right here in God's house. And once they become famous and popular and have plenty, what do they forget? Where they learned how to sing in the first place. And who gave them the ability to sing. It's not just riches that do this. It's not just the wealthy that have this problem. It's the educated it's the victorious. It's the successful. It is the, the rugged individual. It is the survivor. All have the problem of these great blessings that God has given to us becoming something that takes the place of our God. And blessings can be a major source of struggle in our walk with Christ. And we're going to meet a young man today. He's, we don't know his name, but as we read Matthew and Mark and Luke, they all record it. We find out that he's rich. He's a rich man. He's got means, right? Not only is he rich, but he's a ruler. We don't know what he rules. We don't know if it's a business. We don't know if he's political. We don't know if it's a ruler of a synagogue. But he's got power and influence in society. He's also young. So he's got the energy and the zeal of youth. And he's got his whole life ahead of him. Rich, young ruler. We also find out that this is a pretty good guy. He's moral. He follows God's commands. He tries very hard to do exactly what God said. He had everything going for him. This is a good guy who's wealthy. He's got means and, and he's got influence. And he's also young. He's got the whole his whole life ahead of him. Blessed beyond measure. And yet we find out that he is struggling. This summer we're taking a look at different people from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And realizing that they have some of the same struggles that you and I have. Different culture, different time, different situation. But mankind, regardless of where they are or when they live, really struggle with the same things through and through. Amen? 
people in the Old Testament and the New Testament had the same spiritual struggles that you have. Today we're going to take a look at the rich young ruler who was struggling with God's blessings. So this is what happened. You can follow along in the bulletin if you want. I'm going to read it out of my Bible here and we're going to talk about it a couple verses at a time. Matthew chapter 19. But now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Just stop there for a moment. So here's this, this rich young ruler recognizes that something is missing in his life. He has done all these good things. He has all this success in his life. He has all these blessings. And yet he recognizes that something is lacking. As much as he has done and as much as he had been given and as wonderful as his life seemed, something was missing. And he goes to Jesus and he says, tell me, Jesus, what do I have to do? I just don't feel like I'm quite ready for eternity. Tell me, Jesus, what I need to do to make sure that I get to go to heaven. Well, there's a problem there. You can tell by the way he asked the question that he thought that the blessings of God, spiritual, eternal, physical blessings, come to us because we earn it, we deserve it, we achieve it, we try for it. You hear it? What must I do? He failed to recognize that the blessings that God gives comes to us not because of what we do, but because of God's grace, God's love. He showers them on me, not because I have earned it, but because he is such a loving God who wants to be nice to you. And so Jesus reaches out to him and starts talking about what is good. There is only one who is good. That's an evangelism thing there that he's doing. He's witnessing to this rich young man. He's saying the only one who is good is really God. But we'll, we won't worry about that too much. He said, obey the commandments. So you want to be right with God? You want to be righteous before the Lord God? Obey the commandments. And so the rich young man, this is what he says. Which one? The man replied. Jesus replied, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. So he starts talking about the commandments. Just, just a point here of teaching, a point of theology. He's going through the commandments that are the second table of the law. So Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and there are two tablets or two tables that he came down with. The second half is the, the, or the first half of the Ten Commandments, this is God, love for God. The second half is the second table of the law, the second tablet that deals with love for our neighbors, okay? So Jesus goes through the second table of the law and said, have you done these things towards your fellow man, towards your parents, towards those around you? Every normal person would look at those commandments and immediately bow their heads in shame because they'd recognize that they hadn't what? I listen to that, and if Jesus said, you want eternal life, obey these, I would go, uh, yeah, I don't know if this rich young ruler was just kind of not really understanding God's commandments properly or not, or if he really was this good. But he doesn't bat an eye. And Jesus doesn't challenge him either. <laughs> This is what, what he says in response to all these commands. All these I have kept, the young man said. Uh, what do I still lack? Jesus replied, or all, um, Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. I don't know if he really had kept all those commandments perfectly, but Jesus lets it go. And it would seem likely that he was probably a pretty moral guy trying to follow God's commands that he had in his life worked pretty hard to try and follow all those commands. And if you and I had seen him, we would have said, that's a guy with good moral character. And so then Jesus says, and he asks, well, what do I still lack? And Jesus says, go sell all of your stuff and give it to the poor. 
Now, God doesn't tell all of us to do that. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. God made Abraham wealthy. God made Job wealthy. God made Solomon wealthy. There's nothing wrong with that. But he knew that for this young man, the issue that he had in his life was his money, his stuff. And he says, go sell all of that and show me that you love me more than you love your stuff. Which commandment is that? First first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. And the blessings that God had given to the rich young ruler had suddenly become something more important than the one who gave it to him in the first place. The blessings that God had given to him had become an obstacle to his walk with the Lord God Almighty. The good things that God had done suddenly had become a bad thing. Because he couldn't give them up. This is true not just of wealth. Wealth is the easiest one. The Bible talks about it repeatedly, right? There's verses, there's a verse uh, in Timothy that says, it says this, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wanted from the faith and pierced themselves with their griefs. But that's not just true of money, that's true of every earthly physical blessing that God gives to us. Maybe it's happiness in my life. The pursuit of happiness can lead to all sorts of evil things as well, right? I want to be happy, so I will do all sorts of things to try and achieve it, even things that are contrary to God's law. A good marriage, right? Successful children, uh, uh, peace in my life and not drama. Success on the job, a nice house, whatever it is, all the things, physical, earthly blessings that there are from God can become something that we pursue to the point we were no longer where they become an issue with our Lord God Almighty and our relationship with Him. Amen? You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? This young man, his issue was his money. And it caused all kinds of problems for him. Jesus says this, no one can serve two masters. And whether it's money, or whether it's your personal happiness, or whether it's uh, uh, love, you cannot serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You cannot serve both God and whatever it is God and God alone are you with me I'm going to ask the question later do you love an earthly blessing too much for this young man it was his wealth what might it be for you maybe it's not money I would guess for a lot of us it's not money what is it for you? It's a question for us to carry home today. This is how it ends. This is how the account ends. Weirdest verse in all of Scripture. When the young man heard this, he went away sad. Why? Because he had great wealth. He went away sad because he had a lot of money. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples heard this. They said, uh, we're greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. This is the word of the Lord. What is he saying? He said it is difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God as much as it is a camel to go through an eye of a needle. And it's not just rich in money, but rich in earthly physical blessings. All of them can cause problems when it comes to our walk with Christ. Maybe you are blessed with a great family. That can be an issue. Maybe you are blessed with great success. That can be an issue. Maybe you are blessed with whatever. The earthly, physical blessings that God gives us can be an obstacle to us and it can be difficult to enter the kingdom of God because we start to put those things as more important than the Lord God Almighty. And the disciples say, well, who in the world can be saved? And Jesus says, with well, man, this is, it is impossible. Not improbable, not unlikely, not difficult. It 
is impossible for you and me to save ourselves. But with God it is. We are only saved because of God. And you and I know what that means. Because of the cross of Jesus Christ and the empty tomb, you and I have been forgiven, and it is through faith in him that you and I are saved. And that is the only way that we are saved. Not by what we do, not by what we achieve, not because God has blessed me with all these physical things. That's how I know that I am saved. I am saved by the cross of Christ and only by the cross of Christ. Amen? So what do we take home? What do we take home from this? Have you ever felt in your walk with Christ that maybe something was missing? That maybe it wasn't just right? You look at your life and you're trying hard and you're doing the right things. You're saying your prayers. You're doing what God would have you do, but it just feels a little bit like it's not 100% there. That's what the rich young man felt, right? He was doing the right things. He had great success. It seemed like God was smiling on him. It seemed like God was blessing him. It seemed like God loved him, but he just sat there and he said, something isn't right and I don't understand what's wrong. Maybe, maybe the issue is that we look at the blessings, whether spiritual, physical, or eternal, as something that we need to earn and achieve from the Lord God Almighty. Maybe it's something that we feel that we have to do something in order to get just like the rich young man. How do I know if I look at God's blessings as something? Oh, that's a great verse, but I missed that paragraph, so we're going to move on. From it. I missed it. How do I know if I view God's blessings as something that I need to achieve, something that I need to earn? One way is, am I motivated by guilt or fear? Am I doing the things that God wants me to do simply because I'll feel guilty if I don't or I'm afraid that he might get angry with me if I don't? Sometimes we need guilt. We need the guilt to give us a kick in the pants so that we get moving if we're lazy or selfish or whatever. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about am I motivated when I do the right things, when I serve my Lord God, when I go to church, when I read my Bible, when I forgive my spouse, am I doing those things out of guilt or am I doing them out of joy and thanksgiving for what God has done? If I am motivated by guilt and fear, maybe, just maybe, I'm viewing God's blessings as something that I need to achieve. God's blessings are a free gift that come from his grace and only from his grace. When I begin to do things out of guilt or fear, it is no longer received simply through joy by the grace of God but it is something that I must achieve. How else might I know if I am viewing God's blessings as something that I need to earn? Do I feel guilty about things that aren't sinful? Now maybe if I feel guilty about something that isn't sinful, it's because I misunderstand something in God's word or my pastor taught me wrong or my, my parents taught me wrong. But sometimes when we feel guilty over something that isn't sinful, we start to think that, well, I should have done that, and I really wanted to do that, then God would really be happy with me. We start to feel guilty over things that aren't really sinful, and that's not, that's not right. If it isn't sinful, then you shouldn't feel guilty over it, so why are you feeling guilty over it? God loves me whether I do these things or not. God blesses me not because I have done extra, not because I've, I've been so great, but he blesses me because he is so great. God gives out of love, out of grace, not because you are so wonderful and you give extra rules on the bottom. If we start to feel guilty over something that isn't sinful, then maybe we got some things flipped around. Maybe the hole in our spiritual life, the emptiness that we feel, Comes from, comes from the idea of, do my blessings make me better than my neighbor? Now you and I would say, well, I would never do that. Yeah, you know, we, all, we all do that just a little bit, don't we? When we look at what I've achieved and where I've gone and how my life is going and what my children are like and what my house is like and where I've been and the things that I've experienced and we look at the person next to us and say, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good compared to so and so. 
that really comes from the idea that my blessings somehow have come to me because of something that I have done. And really the blessings that God gives to me come simply from the grace of God and nowhere else. And if they come from God's grace, then what right do I have to look down on my neighbor in arrogance? Holes in our faith, maybe coming from the idea that God's blessings are something I need to achieve. One last one here. Have I ever tried to manipulate God into giving me a blessing or giving me something that I want? So I'm going to do this good thing. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to say my prayers. I'm going to be extra, extra religious, extra Lutheran, extra whatever over the next week, then maybe God will give me the thing that I've been praying about. Now, it's natural when we want something to go to the Lord God, to go to God's house, to go to Him in prayer, to read the Bible. That's all a natural thing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about specifically doing things because you want God to give you what you want. Not because you see God as the one person, the one, uh, the one place to go when you need help. Ever tried to manipulate God, maybe like the rich young ruler? I view God's blessings as something that come to me because of what I do rather than from the grace of God. Whenever I do that, there's going to be a spiritual hole in my life. Are you with me? What else do we take home? Take home the fact that sometimes, how do I know that sometimes my earthly blessings, my physical blessings become an obstacle to me in my walk with Christ? How do I know if I love something too much? One of the blessings that God has given to me, I love it too much. How do I know? Right? Let's look at some thoughts that I have on that. Am I willing to give it up for God? The rich young man could not sell his possessions and give them up for God. They were too important to him. He loved them too much. I asked you earlier, what physical, earthly, human blessing has God given to you that you might love too much, that has the danger of becoming something that becomes your God or equal to your God rather than, rather than God being your God? I got myself into a weird sentence there, but you understand what I'm trying to communicate, right? Where I become more attached to the blessing than the one who gave it to me. If, if God would have me give it up, would I accept that from God? I'll admit that there are some human physical blessings that God has given to me that I'd have a hard time if God asked me to give them up. And I pray that he never does. Because there are some things that I think, I think I'd really struggle with. But it's good for me to know that because then I know that those are the things that have the danger of interfering with my relationship with the Lord God Almighty. Amen? To pay, pay special attention to those things. And maybe remember that those things are mine because God loves me. Amen? Do I love something? Do I love a blessing too much? Is my relationship with God defined by it? Your relationship and mine should be defined by the cross of Jesus Christ and the empty tomb. That's what defines who I am before the Lord God and what I, how I stand before him. Not by the fact that he did this for me or he has given this for me or my life is like this. If my relationship before the Lord God is defined by something other than the cross and the empty tomb, and that might be a sign that that thing in my life is something that has the danger of interfering with my relationship with Christ. You with me? God, I know that God loves me because, first and foremost, he did X, Y, and Z. No. I know that God loves me, first and foremost, because he died on the cross and rose again to assure me of my salvation. Are you with me? Everyone got something running through their head right now? I got something running through mine. Do I love a blessing too much? Am I serving the blessings, or are the blessings serving me? God gives us blessings because he wants them to be something that attaches me to him, an opportunity for me to serve him. 
an opportunity for me to give thanks to him for what he has done, not so that they become the thing that I serve. If I find in my life that the reason that I do things is for that blessing or for that physical thing, then maybe that thing has become my God and I am not serving the Lord God anymore. And that is not a blessing, a tool to keep me closer to him, but it has become something that is interfering with my relationship with the Lord God Almighty. Are you with me on that? Is the thing that I love, do I serve it? Or is it serving me? God gave it to me to serve me. Are you with me on that? When you read this story in the Gospel of Mark, there's this wonderful little phrase that it's easy to read past. But Jesus, after the young man says, all these I have kept since I was a child, it says, Jesus looked at the young man, and the idea there looked at him as he studied him. He looked down into him. He understood who he was. He looked at his heart, his soul, who he was. He examined him. And then it says, and he loved him. What a great line, right? Jesus looked at this young man's heart and knew that it wasn't right with the Lord God and that he hadn't done things the way that it was supposed to be and he wasn't as righteous as he thought he was. And Jesus loved him anyway. God looks at you and me. And every day we try and live our lives for Jesus Christ, but there are blessings that God gives to us that have the potential to interfere and probably have already interfered with our relationship with God Almighty. God looks at you and me, he looks down into our heart and he sees where it is and he sees where we're off. He does the same thing. He loves us. He loves us in spite of our flaws and our faults. He loves us in spite of the fact that we don't always put him first. He loved us enough to die. And so because of that, you and I say a very difficult prayer. A prayer that the rich young ruler couldn't pray. A prayer that says, Lord God, bless me. For if my blessings interfere with my relationship with you, Lord God, I'd rather not have it. It's a tough prayer. Tough prayer. But it's the right one. Jesus told the rich young man, go sell you and all your stuff and give it up. Because he knew that that blessing was his obstacle. I pray that the Lord God would give you a faith that would always focus on him and be thankful for him for all that you have. I pray that the Lord God would give you a faith that knows that the blessings that you have come from his love, give you the confidence of knowing that his love is on you no matter how you live or what mistakes you make. And I pray that the Lord would give you a faith that would say, Lord God, bless me enough that I don't dishonor your name. Don't bless me so much that I forget who you are. For Jesus' sake. Let's stand and join together in song. Uh, the first song of Isaiah.
my sermon was especially long this morning. So we are going to uh, skip a few pieces of the service. This, this pianist there, is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. So we're going to skip a few sections of it because I went extremely long. I apologize for that. We bring our offerings to the Lord. The offering plates are in the back. Post your prayer requests to those online. our prayers. Special prayers have been requested for Kim. This is a family friend of the Jordans who had her foot amputated yesterday, so we'll pray for her. We also pray for Sharon, whose birthday is today, and she turns 29. Right, Sharon? No, no, not 29. 21. 81. 81. So thank the Lord God for 81 years of life. Congratulations. Any other prayer requests today? Yes. Paul Larson. Paul Larson had a, had a um, procedure done this week, and he's doing well. Yes, Carmen. She had what? Procedure. She's going to have a procedure on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. We will pray for her. Any other prayer requests? Yes, sir. Happy Eli's birthday. Oh, Eli's birthday. Okay. Happy birthday. Yo, okay. Yeah. Healing for? Joe. For Joe. Yes. Thanks for a new baby cousin. A new baby cousin. Uh, what's the new baby cousin's <laughs> name? Ewan Hardy. Ewan McGregor. Oh, Ewan McGregor. How do you spell that? Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> God knows. God knows who we're talking about. Yeah. Thanks for a safe delivery. Okay. Yeah, we'll break that. Yes, sir. Awesome. Going back to work. Oh, back to work. The blessing of work. All right. Yay. Ted gets to go back to work, so we thank God for that. Got the month up. Yes. Uh, we're getting ready to travel. Yeah. Uh, family, and any of our family members are going to so we will pray that. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Pastor, uh, and also I want to give a thanks for uh, give a thanks to God. My aunt is coming fine after um, test she has. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the test that your auntie is going to go through? Yeah, my aunt has a, a test for a uh, for leukemia. Oh. Okay, okay. Medical test. Yes, Sharon. My brother Kenneth uh, is in Spalding rehabilitation. Um, he is, they are trying to get him back. Um, he's had a stroke and um, he has a weak heart. Okay. So we'll remember Ken in prayer, or Kenneth in our prayers as well. Online, do we have any prayer requests online? Thank you. All right. A uh, friend of Lepus's is going to have surgery. Uh, uh, Dave's dad also had surgery. I think that's Dave Lepus, so we'll remember Dave's dad in prayer. And uh, uh, safe travel for the Lepus's as well. Okay. So let's stand and join together in prayer. We will not sing the, the song. Because I preach the <laughs> We bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all the blessings that you give to us. Forgive us for the times that the blessings have taken your place, Lord. Help us instead. Let the blessings instead turn our eyes to you and to be thankful to you, recognizing that they, we have them because of your grace, Lord God. We ask for some special blessings on those who we love, Lord God, and we think of those who are traveling. 
We think of Dave Lepus and family as they go and the Hale family. Pray, Lord God, for safe travel. Pray, Lord God, that you would watch over them. Pray for health, Lord God, and pray that you would bless that trip. Uh, we pray for all those who are struggling with health issues and we commit them to your care and ask for your blessing on them. Uh, we pray for Kim, that you would help her to heal and recover from foot amputation. Um, we pray for Paul Larson, Lord God, that you would continue to bless his recovery from a procedure. We commit Mamita to your care and ask for your blessing on her procedure as well. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with them. Pray that you would be with Joe and that you would heal him from the issues that he is having, Lord God. We commit him to your care and ask for your special blessing on him. Um, we, we pray, Lord God, for, for Carmen's auntie who is going to have some medical tests. We pray, Lord God, that you would make all those tests go well, that there wouldn't be anything wrong, Lord God. We pray for Kenneth in rehab and we ask for your blessing on him and we pray, Lord God, that you would strengthen him every day so that he can go home. We thank you, Lord God, for, for uh, uh, blessing Dave's dad. Uh, pray, thank you, Lord God, that that went well. Pray, Lord God, that you would continue to watch over and bless and heal him. Um, pray for Kyle's friend, Nick, who's going to have surgery, uh, blood clotting, clotting problem. We pray, Lord God, that you would be with Nick and that you would guide doctors and you would bless the surgery that he's going to have. All those who are struggling with their health, we commit to your care and we pray, Lord God, that you would heal their bodies and that you would strengthen their souls and their faith in you, Lord God. We come to you, Lord God, and also give you thanks for uh, for the blessing of new life. We thank you for, for Ewen. And thank you for bringing mom and baby safely through delivery. Pray that you would continue to bless mom and baby in the recovery. Thank you also for the years of life that you have given to Eli and Joe and to Sharon. We commit them to your care and ask for your special blessing on them. As you bless them this last year, bless them in the year to come. Watch over them, Lord God. And finally, we give you thanks for the gift of work. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing Ted to go back to work. We pray that you would bless him there and keep him safe. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Toward the top of page 12 is a verse from Just As I Am. We join together in that song. Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this cup is the new covenant in my blood it is poured out for you and for the forgiveness of all of these sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me peace of the Lord be with you always amen and we join in the verse
So it's the first time we're, that we're going to do communion the way that we used to pre-COVID. So I'm going to remind everyone how this works since it's been 16 months. We're going to line up in a line here and we'll make a line across the front. Um, I will put a wafer in your hands. I have just sanitized my hands. Just so you know. And uh, Mr. Calvert will pass by with the tray of individual cups. Take one of those if you want. I will pass by with the common cup. If you want the common cup, don't take an individual one, okay? And as I pass by, I will speak the words and then dismiss you. And you can make your way back to your seat to the side, okay? Um, anything else that I forgot? That's all right. You'll be ushered up again. So I'll read Mr. Walters will usher you forward, okay? Um, during the distribution, we will join in the hymn that is printed in the program. Um, do we want to start with us? <laughs> or why don't you just come forward and with the first two? body of our Lord Jesus, given in his death, and the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is, the, this is the true body of our Lord Jesus, given in his death for your sins. And drink, this is the true blood of our Lord Jesus, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting, or death peace with you. Sins are forgiven.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus, strengthen you, keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Lord, to have peace with the Almighty God, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Brothers, sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with joy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his faith and give you his peace. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Living Hope Lutheran Church, especially our guests, our visitors. Thank you for coming to worship with us. Before we sing our last song, just take a moment to greet the people around you. Say good morning. Good morning. 